Howdy folks, welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Tuesday, March the 29th, 2016. And I have the great honor and distinct pleasure of welcoming back to the show, the Doc from Silver Doctors. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing great, Rory. Uh, thanks for having me back. Well, I'm certainly glad that you're here. We have, uh, last time I checked, we were having a, a green day, and it still looks kind of green. It's green for gold, red for silver. And I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I was just listening to uh, last week's uh, market update that uh, you and Eric Dubin put out. Last week, you were speaking with Harvey Oregon, and you had said that as of last week, there was about 14 million silver eagles that had been sold does that and that equates to about two hundred thousand a day is that what they're allocating at this point yeah that's right about two hundred thousand coins a day so here we are uh, tuesday morning the 29th and that's past 14.5 million now two days later wow and last time that you and i spoke the authorized purchasers of silver eagles were they you had alluded to that they were trying to get their back stock rebuilt and how is that working out has there been any how are they able to do that if there's only 200,000 coins available a day i mean that sounds like that's going to be a slow arduous process it certainly is and i mean that's that seems to be the strategy for some of the ap's not all of them i mean obviously it's a it's their own business decision and do they want to move as much volume as they can right now or do they want to <clears throat> store up coins so the next time a, a tight spot in the market or real shortage hits, they've got a little bit of a cushion and some coins built up. So, um, I mean, it varies a little bit depending on the different uh, strategies from the, the different businesses. I mean, really, when the U.S. Mint's still allocating the coins, the only thing you can do is raise your prices so you don't sell as many. That's about it. So... I mean, and, and are you starting to, how are the premiums doing? Are they, are they stabilizing? Are they going up? Are they going down? What's happening there? Premiums have been pretty stable the last month or so, um, specifically Silver Eagles and Maples, maybe creeping down very, very slightly, but um, not substantially. So nothing really to get excited about in, in, no, really, either way. Probably the biggest change we've seen in premiums is 90% silver over the last week. Uh, prices have dropped probably about 50 cents retail level. I think we're now selling, I think, 299 over spot any quantity. Some of the other dealers have dropped from about 380 to 330. Um, so retail levels, 90% silver has dropped about 50 cents. And same thing in the wholesale market has dropped about 50 cents. So that means that there's more coming back into the market. Correct. There's been, uh, and really over the past month or so, we've seen an unusually large uptick in sellers um, for what we've seen over the past three or four years. It's It's been interesting. And that's, I mean, the, and that's with uh, SD Bullion? Right. And I mean, we're still seeing sustained high levels of purchasing, but uh, we're seeing a, a few more sellers come out into the market probably with um, the bump up we've seen in gold and silver prices this year. Um, whether it's people who just need cash and they've been waiting for a little bit of better prices to, to sell their metal or, or what, but we've, it's nothing substantial, but we've definitely seen an uptick in sellers. The gold silver ratio. I mean, last I heard it was right around 80, 80 to one, the 80 to one ratio. I know Eric Sprott pays attention to it and he said, he has said for a long time, for a couple of years that silver outsells gold by about 50 to 1. Or do you see that same type of ratio with SD bullion? Yeah, sh certainly. Ounce per ounce, silver vastly outsells gold. Um, we're a little bit skewed from the industry as a whole. The um, gold and silver investment industry in the United States as a whole is about 60 to 70 percent, um, and talking dollar figures, 60 to 70 percent gold over uh, versus 30 to 40 percent silver and we're about the opposite of that at sd bullion obviously with uh, starting silver doctors and we believe in silver's fundamentals and if uh, i mean we're all about silver just personally 
I believe, uh, like I believe silver is uh, an excellent investment uh, relative to gold right now. And exactly due to that, right now it's trading at 81 to 1 ratio. And I mean, if you look at the historical numbers, I personally think silver is a better investment. So I think due to uh, our, uh, our company and the fact that SD Bullion uh, was founded off of Silver Doctors, um, we have a lot higher percentage of silver investors than the average um, bullion dealer does. So our numbers, you really can't take our numbers as across the whole industry because everybody we talk to are, are shocked the amount of silver we sell versus gold. And, <laughs> and speaking of which, uh, are you still seeing an influx of new customers uh, and your current customers? Are they still stacking or what's driving your business at this point? Yeah, it's still been a steady influx of new customers. Uh, um, I mean, <laughs> interestingly, over the last probably two to three weeks, there's been a lot of um, new customers who have uh, fairly substantially large purchases. And we're talking um, mid five figure purchases, um, which is a pretty substantial purchase versus it's not just somebody who has a day job and they're um, investing um, their extra money they have every week. Like, I did for years, and a lot of our customers do for years. They might invest five hundred dollars a week, or a couple tubes of silver eagles a week, or once a month, or or what have you. So that's certainly interesting. That um, there's definitely definitely been an uptick in the proportion of um, large to medium sized buyers versus um, just the the normal average Americans and who have been buying gold and silver and what they can afford with their weekly paycheck or monthly paycheck. Yeah, that is, that is an interesting uh, bit of information because that means that some high wealth people are looking around and don't really like what they're seeing. Right, exactly. I mean, I know I don't like what I'm seeing. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm really sick of the lies and the deceit and the propaganda, the wars. I mean, just the endless parade of nonsense that we have to deal with on a daily basis it's just like my goodness can we just have one day where it's you know just like regular normal to kind of day <laughs> <laughs> is that would be possible nice. <laughs> well, it'd be different <laughs> oh my goodness and what is, what do you see uh or is there any really cool unusual uh, coins, either numismatic or private mint <laughs> rounds that you're that you're seeing that that maybe people need to pay attention to. Sure, the U.S. Mint has just released. Well, I guess they technically haven't released. They've they've released their uh, um, orders to the authorized purchasers for the Cumberland Gap ATB. So uh, we're now taking orders on uh, the Cumberland Gap. I think they're still about three to four weeks out on uh, shipping for when they'll be in from the mint. Those are, those are coins that I've really liked. And personally, I've bought a lot of ATBs in the past as they're not too far premium wise from a silver ego. When the mint releases them, they only produce them for a month or two and previous releases, the premiums have gone up quite a bit once they're out of production. So that's a coin I personally have bought in the past. Um, and collectors really like those because each design is different and, um, they replic they're uh, the same design as uh, the fifty state quarter set. Um, they're really beautiful pieces. Okay. Yeah, um, and, th and that's a five ounce coin, right? Yep, those are five ounce coins. Uh, official legal tender of twenty five cents. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a whole quarter. <laughs> Worth a whole quarter, exactly. So let me. So I really like straight. those. Yeah. <laughs> so if I get a silver silver eagle, <laughs> which has a face value of one dollar. And it's one ounce of silver, but I get an America the Beautiful five ounce coin, and it has a face value of twenty five cents. Exactly. So if you want to use that at Wendy's or Kroger, that'll uh, you need a couple to buy a pack of gum. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> oh my goodness! And, and yeah. I was listening to um, when I was listening to your to last week's uh, market update. Uh, Harvey Oregon was talking about the volume of silver and as far as what the United States 
digs out of the ground and what we're supposed to be using specifically for the American Silver Eagle program. They're not supposed to be, by law, using any imported silver, but apparently they're, that's not the case anymore. Yeah, they, they had have, to change that law because just Silver Eagles alone, were, the U.S. Mint was uh, selling more Silver Eagles than the entire domestic U.S. silver production. So they had to, they had to adjust that a little bit. And, and how much <clears throat> are we importing for that at this point? Do you, do you, do you know? Um, I mean, they don't release their statistics, but it's it's got to be just rough back the napkin calculations. I'd guess somewhere between sixteen hundred million ounces when you talk all investment silver. Because um, I mean, silver eagles are only a portion. You have private rounds, private ten ounce bars, hundred ounce bars, uh, unique numismatic things like the two ounce. Uh, Privateer coins like the Kraken, and I mean, it's endless list of private offerings. Um, I mean, you have the the Royal Canadian Mint, their maples, their ten ounce bars, hundred ounce bars. So just, the, I mean, just the bullion silver eagles are uh, a small. I shouldn't say small because they're a decent size of the the market. They're the number one seller in the U.S. as far as bullion items. So they're they're a significant chunk, but. Uh, from what we see at SD Bullion, they're probably a third or less of total overall bullion volume. Really? Right. Wow. Well, that's that's uh, that's very interesting because just until recently, uh, the Silver Institute wasn't even accounting for the private uh, rounds and bars. As far as their calculations, I mean, yeah, I, mean I think that's only like, been in the last year or two that they started looking at that and, and and including that in their annual annual report. Yeah, those are vastly underreported. Uh, so that that's more garbage information. <laughs> exactly. I mean, but, I mean, it's just hard to uh, collect that because it's, I mean, they're all private mints. They don't all need to uh, publicly report. So it's, uh, it's tough to, it's tough to put a number on that outside of um, talking to a wholesaler or a bullion dealer who can kind of do a comparison of how much volume they're do doing compared to something like the Silver Eagle, which the U.S. Mint puts out a, supposedly anyways, a hard number that they've sold. Now, as far as the Silver Eagles, um, we are on pace to actually blow out last year. I mean, I believe you said that we were 15% ahead of 2015. Do you think that that's going to continue or is that going to increase or are they going to have to shut down again? Well, I don't think it's going to increase because the U.S. Mint's allocating production and they don't seem to have any intent to increase their allocations. Um, I mean, if they wanted to increase their allocations to meet the meet the demand, I mean, if nothing else, they'd start up their San Francisco Mint again. I mean, they're running it for four years from 2011 through 2014, and then they just uh, shut her down again. So I, don't, I really don't see... Um, production increasing from what it's been at because I don't see the U.S. Mint government officials doing anything to respond to the demand. They'll just keep cranking out 200,000 coins a day and patting themselves on the back. Um, but yeah, I do certainly think that um, from all indications, the, if the demand continues, there's no reason to think that um, the allocation is going to end anytime soon. That is amazing. And I mean, we're coming up on a year now. I mean, it's, I mean, we're a day or two away from April and it was, it's been really since last, uh, what, June that the, everything's been on allocation. Was it June? I, mean, I, was, I was thinking it was July. Well, officially it was July. I mean, they, they saw, technically it's been June because, uh, the whole, uh, Greece crisis, the U S mint sold out of all their coins in a day and they shut down for a month. And then when they, uh, just so they could build up inventories, and then when they um, resume sales in July, they're on allocation. So okay. however you want to look, however you want to look at it, June when they shut down sales for a month, or July when they started taking them back up, they haven't. It's been since early last June that 
and AP has been able to call up the mint and order as many as they want. That is mind boggling. I mean, if you think about it, because this is the number one selling coin in the world, right? Exactly. So, and it, and it's been on allocation for 10 months because I think it was like June 8th when they sold out. It was somewhere. It was in that first, right. first 10 days of June that they sold out. So, and like you said, a couple of days away from April. So, I mean, my goodness. And are, do you think, uh, doc, are, are we seeing signs that we are actually entering the third phase of the bull market? Is that, is that kicking in right now? Is that what's going on? Um, I mean, there's lots of signs that I think lead to that. Uh, I personally think we most likely are, um, I mean, give it another two or three months and we'll know for sure after, uh, if gold uh, goes down and tests, uh, say 1140 and, and bounces back and it'll be interesting to see how the Huey does and uh, the gold stocks. Um, silver has a lot of support, really about 30 cents lower, 1490. So um, it's really not unusual at all to see a bit of a correction here, whether it's manipulation, induced by manipulation or uh, which it certainly seemed like it was uh, to get the ball rolling right ahead of uh, the last um, FOMC statement. But um, technically, things were a little bit overbought in the short term. Now, long term, um, not at all. But in the short term, especially gold was um, getting overbought, and its uh, um, COMEX trading was the commercials were getting pretty heavily short. So, um, I mean, everything's a cycle, and we really don't want gold and silver to go straight up because that's not sustainable. So, right. Uh, so, I I, thir- I certainly think uh, things look promising for the rest of 2016 and beyond for gold and silver. Do you think that that we are going to see a significant correction within the next uh, few weeks or so? Well, I think the correction's in process right now. Um, okay. So it really hasn't been as sharp as previous ones. Now, could that come? Yeah, especially with this week, options expiration and uh, jobs report on Friday. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get through this week. Um, but certainly it's already been a couple, couple three weeks that um, gold and silver have been correcting. And with part of that being just sideways correction to work off a little bit of the overbought uh, short-term levels just with a sideways correction. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll start moving to the positive. And I'm really, I'm very optimistic about 2016. I mean, especially if the, if the, U.S. Mint continues allocating product for the remainder of this year. Won't that send a very strong signal to the precious metals market as a whole? Yeah, would cer- that, would that certainly be, will. Would that not be, you know, something's going on here with the actual physical product that the U.S. Mint has to remain on ration sales for, say, we'll just project out to December. I mean, that would be uh, 18 months. I mean, that would, I would think that people would go, hmm, something don't seem right here. Yeah, certainly. And that's definitely not going to end anytime soon if we do get further correction in gold and silver. I mean, if, you, if we get a 14 handle on silver again, uh, demand's going to spike again. So, yeah, it's it's really hard to see a picture that anytime in the near future, um, the U.S. Mint's going to be just readily producing coins by come by as many as you want. I think they're going to continue allocating at least through the second quarter from what it looks like to me. Well. Get them while you can. That's all I can say. (laughs) Well, Doc, I certainly appreciate all your time and all your wisdom this morning. And I'll let you get back to your business. I know you got a lot going on with uh, SD Bullion, which is a premier sponsor of the Daily Coin. And I greatly appreciate the support and uh, all the, the news that you put together over at Silver Doctors and uh, Eric Dubin running the the news doctors for you over there. You you got your hands full. 
Yeah, we uh, keep busy. We <laughs> certainly do, Rory, <laughs> as you do as well. Well, I try. I, I don't have near what you guys have going on over there, but <laughs> I'm doing what I can. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot to I forgot to tell you. Uh, you'll appreciate uh, this one. Your question of any other uh, cool numismatic things in the works. Um, we've got a we got something special planned for. Uh, tax day coming up here the 15th we're going to le- release the final uh, coin in the heroes sd war collection it's going to be a tea party coin for the for uh tax day <laughs> very cool see I, was, I thought you was sitting on something i don't know why but i had a feeling <laughs> <laughs> along with that we're going to do a kind of a special release um along with it we're going to do a, a double reverse of an antiqued version of the double reverse of the the heroes on both sides, and it's going to be uh, numbered to uh, on the actual coin itself. It'll be numbered to uh, two hundred and fifty. So, that so we're going to cool. wrap up the hero series uh, with a pretty limited uh, mintage on that uh, double reverse. So we're excited about that and uh, sticking it to the IRS on tax day, <laughs> <laughs> which we all need to. <laughs> So, well, I'm, I'm, that, that's very exciting. Well, we'll have to get you back in here uh, somewhere around the release of that and let, remind folks that, that they're out there. Uh, I will let you get back to your morning, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. All right. I uh, appreciate it, Roy. Always good to talk to you. Same here. Thank you so much. All right. Take care.